Hello and welcome to yet another exciting episode of the talk show. I'm your host, Siri Smith, coming to you from the Motorrad showroom at Santon Auto. We have an epic lineup for this week, so get comfortable because it's time to put pedal to the metal. Coming up on the show, we take a look at the ferocious Mercedes AMG A45 formatic and meet its rivals. We also take a closer look at the beautiful Rolls Royce Dawn as well as show you how to check your vehicle's vital signs. They say that the new Mercedes AMG A45 formatic is like playing with fire, boasting new power and new ferocity. We were intrigued and ordered one to test. Take a look at this beauty. Agile and safe on country roads, as well as ultra dynamic on the racetrack. The Mercedes AMG A45 Formatic was first introduced in 2013. Fast forward to the flashy facelift in 2016, which immediately exceeded all expectations, grabbing the top position in its market. Its worldwide success is no reason for the sports car brand within Mercedes-Benz to rest on its laurels. On the contrary, for after extensive updating, the Mercedes-AMG A45 formatic now guarantees even more emotional appeal and driving pleasure. That driving pleasure comes in the form of the most powerful series production four-cylinder engine in the world, the AMG 2.0-litre L turbo engine. With increased sensational output of 280 kilowatts and 475 newton meters of torque. The improved AMG SpeedShift DCT 7-speed sports transmission with new drive modes and a sailing function which on comfort mode automatically shifts into neutral on long hill descents for example to save fuel. Race Start now features ignition interruption during upshifts, double declutching and new gear ratios. Three-stage ESP, AMG Speed Sensitive Sports Steering and Formatic All-Wheel Drive combined with optional AMG Ride Control, Sport Suspension and AMG Dynamic Plus for extreme cornering ability. You have five different driving modes to choose from. You've got individual where you can take it off of automatic and use the shift pedals on your steering wheel to change gears. You can also go back into comfort, sport, sport plus. Sport plus you won't have any traction control so the tail will be wagging. And then of course you've got race mode which is my ultimate favorite. Other points that I really admire about this vehicle you have dual climate control which is great because I'm forever cold so I can choose hot and my passenger can choose aircon and we can both be enjoying our own little climate section and apart from that it's also got cruise control so you're gonna set your car at a desired speed and then it will regulate the speed for you and keep it at that it won't go over that um, so you don't have to really do that much driving Great all-round visibility, except over my right shoulder looking out the back window. There is no visibility really, and that's due to the large bucket seats. But apart from that, you've got a nice open feeling and you've got good visibility. The side mirrors fold away by the press of a button. So if you see that you're going to be going through a narrow space and you need that little bit of extra space, you could just press that button and, and it will help you out. Storage compartments within the vehicle is plentiful. You've got cup holders and a side console which you can store stuff on your passenger side, driver's side and you've got your middle console. You've also got an ashtray and a lighter. 
There's no wind noise in the interior. So driving really is a pleasure if you're driving in silence. If you don't want to drive in silence, it's got a great sound system. So road trips will be fun, especially with your sunroof. The vehicle is quite heavy on fuel, but I mean, if you're going to be driving a racing car, fuel consumption is not really something you're going to be looking at, um, which means that if you're going to use this as a family car, it's going to be an expensive family car. The steering is extremely responsive, and maneuvering in and out of somewhere is also going to be even better due to the eagle's eye view that you've got with the camera situated all around so it will actually when you put it into reverse show you the reverse camera and once you put it back into driving mode it will actually still keep it on the outside surroundings so that you can still see what what could be in the way And then it's got stop start. So every single time you stop at a stop street, it does shut the engine down and that also saves a little bit of fuel. This car really is a looker. Every single person I drive by looks at this car and goes, yo, 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 yo. Because it has that effect on you. Even when you just have it standing in the driveway, it's the type of car you just have to give one last glance at before you leave. And then I can show you while I'm standing still, waiting for traffic. Once you switch your car on, and you put your seatbelt on, it gives you a hug. Have you been hugged by your Mercedes-Benz today? There's a little button that you can press in the middle on the top that it actually has your, let's say your car needs to be towed away. You press the button and it will actually allow you to be towed. This vehicle does have driver assist systems, so if you, especially with the lane departure, if you go over the, the line where you shouldn't be going, then it actually vibrates the steering wheel and just reminds you that this is not where you should be going, lady love. The interior is simply exquisite. It's Mercedes-Benz through and through. You've got black and red color coding in the interior it's got sporty bucket seats, red stitching, racing pedals, as well as a stunning multifunctional steering wheel that also has red stitching and red touches on it. The multifunctional steering wheel, through that you can operate your, your sound levels, you can answer calls, and you can also check some of your car settings through your steering wheel. Your seats are electrically operated, so you can adjust it on the door panel to your desired seating position. You can also save your desired seating position uh, by choosing one of the numbers and then once you climb back into the car, you can just press that number again and it will readjust to your setting. If your lower back has any issues, there's also a button that you can press on the side of the chair that will extend the lower part of the chair to support your lower back. That's for long trips or just if you, if you need that every single time you drive. This vehicle also has a sunroof which I absolutely love and always look out for. It also has heated seats and the sound of this vehicle is on another level. So right now I've got it in comfort mode but if you had to put it in sport already it's sounding even crazier. If you want it even more advanced you're going to put, press a button which will then make the sound even better on the ear. got a reverse camera and also once you put it back into drive it still keeps that camera so it gives you a little bit of an eagle's view eagle's eye view of what's going on around you and always keeping you aware of anything that could bump the vehicle which is amazing
Climbing in the back, your back passengers will feel a little bit bored because the bucket seats do take a lot of the vision away from the road. But it's got a lovely open feeling at the back and the seats are extremely comfortable. This vehicle also has Isofix mounting, so you are able to strap in a baby seat. Although I don't really know if this is a family car per se. Uh, I think that a family would be very comfortable in this vehicle, but it would be a very fast family car. Moving over to the back, boot space is plentiful. There's all our cabaret equipment bags in here, as well as some of my bags, and there's still some space left to pack some more. So road trips will be ultra comfortable and enjoyable. This AMG is definitely one for the racing at heart. It's a vehicle if you love going fast, and also if you like luxury, it's a very, very good blend. Definitely one that I am adding to my wish list. Now we like to keep you the consumer up to date on all your options, so if you are in the market to buy, let's see which beauties bumping heads with the A45 catch your fancy. Starting with the star of our show, the Mercedes AMG A-Class A45 4MATIC with a base price of 773914 this Sportster brags with a 2-litre engine that sprints from 0 to 100 in 4.2 seconds. That's thanks to 280 kilowatts of power and 475 newton meters of torque, consuming on average 7.3 litres per 100 kilometres. Then there's also the Audi S3 Sportback Quattro, which retails for less than the A45 AMG with a retail price of 646,000. The 2 litre S Tronic engine pushes out 228 kilowatts of power and 400 newton meters of torque, reaching 0 to 100 in 4.6 seconds, consuming on average a low 6.5 litres per 100 kilometres. Finally, you could also go for the Volkswagen Golf R, retailing for 647,300. Its 2 litre petrol engine's peak power of 213 kilowatts combined with its 380 newton meters of torque will have you reach 0 to 100 in 4.6 seconds, consuming on average 7 litres per 100 kilometres. We need to get from point A to point B daily. And in most cases, our best friend, the car, will get us there. With seasonal changes, we need to pay a visit to the GP to make sure that our health levels are sorted. The same way, you need to check your car from time to time. So coming up next, we're going to show you how to check your car's vital signs. Hi. Hi, Sue. How are you? Good. How are you? Lovely. Thank you. So with me is Alden, and he's going to be showing us how to check your car's operating fluids. So run us through what you do first. Okay, so today we will be checking the engine oil level. Uh, with that, you first need to make sure that the vehicle is parked on a flat level surface. Um, handbrake up. Obviously, I have the wood open as we have here. Um, with this particular vehicle, we have the oil level measured on the inside of the vehicle. With any other vehicle, you have to check through oil level dipstick. Um, if anything should happen, a little sensor will pick it up and show a warning display on your cluster. So let's say you don't have a warning display and you actually have to check on the dipstick. How would you know if your oil levels are low? As I said previously, vehicle on level surface, preferably check in the morning. Level dipstick, it normally have an indicator on the dipstick whether your oil level is low or too much. Oh, okay. And uh, next step, transmission oils. Where would you check that? Transmission oil, you would actually have the vehicle put in a workshop or booked in a workshop and have it parked on the two post ways, have it raised up. Okay. On that, uh, on the transmission, there's a little tin uh, nut that you need to uh, open up and have a look at the transmission flow through there. And then how, is there also an indication where you'll see on whether the, it's low or... On the transmission fluid, not really, but also it would normally pop up as a warning that it is low. Okay, on the display. On the display, yes. And then also, if you wanted to check your, your brake fluid? Brake fluid, also the same principle as the oil level. Um, you would actually open up the brake fluid level uh, reservoir, 
and on there there's also a little indication that to say that your brake fluid is low unless with a sophisticated car such as this it would show off that your brake fluid level is low. And normally um, if you don't have a, a, a newer model like this but you have an older model you can actually put the brake fluid in, in the front. With, where about would that be situated and how would you know? That would normally be on the top right corner of any vehicle with your brake fluid reservoir. Uh, your power steering fluid? Power steering fluid, on this particular model we don't actually have power steering fluid or any power steering motor. It uses an electrical mechanical power steering. So that's mainly electrically operated. With any other conventional vehicle you have your power steering reservoir somewhere about there and also has oil level indicator on the dipstick as well. And then you'll know whether you it's know low whether it's or low whether... Or high. Okay. And then the coolant? Coolant, as you can see, we've got a clear water bottle. It will have a marker indicator on the bottle as to where your coolant level should be. Do you put water in there? Um, not only water, this needs to be a 50% water mix, 50% antifreeze mix to make sure that everything's 100% in the motor to protect the motor from rust that water usually does cause. Do you have to put that on, in on a regular basis or is that something that if, if something happens then you'll know now I have to put antifreeze? Exactly, so with that it's got an antifreeze level sensor as well. The car will warn you if it does go low. Any other vehicle, you'd have to check it, I'd say, every two weeks or so to make sure your water levels are 100%. Okay, perfect. And then your wind washer. Window uh, washer. There's nothing worse than trying to clean your windows <laughs> and you can't. So run us through where you're going to be doing that. Windscreen washer fluid right next to the water bottle has got the symbol there as well. Um, this doesn't really come with the indication that it is low. So this should, depending on how frequently you use your window washer fluid, you need to top it up quite frequently as well. And then lastly, this is not fluids though, but I think that, that the consumers do need to know how to check your tyre pressure. Tyre pressure you can stop off at any garage. Um, on the tyre pressure gauge, it's got a little uh, symbol over there to say how hard your tyres are uh, pumped or how soft they are really are. That would normally be on the sides of your doors, indicating exactly how much tyre pressure you, you, need to you be should inflated, have. Yes. Okay, well thank you so much for no having problem. us. And we look forward to hearing some more coming thank soon. You. Thanks guys. It's now time to take a short break, but don't go anywhere because we will be right back with more motoring action. Stay tuned.